It's incredibly rare for criminal defendants to take the stand. It's a risk very few take. At stake, their freedom or even their lives. Did you Where kill those four people? No. Who did? I don't know. Adam Matos moved to Hudson in early July 2014. And just two months later, he stands accused of the vicious slaying of his ex-girlfriend, Megan Brown, her parents, Greg and Margaret, and her new boyfriend, Nicholas Leonard. In Florida, a charge of four counts of first-degree murder is eligible for the death penalty. And that is exactly what the state is seeking. Adam Matos is not only fighting for his freedom, He's fighting for his life. But will his testimony be enough to convince 12 jurors he's not guilty of this crime? Adam Matos is not a cold-blooded killer. He's just a dad that got put in a situation that was outside of his ability to deal with. The hours and days that followed, ladies and gentlemen, are that of a man who was stuck. Part of him wanted to call the police, but he was convinced that any contact with the police would surely result in his death and possibly to the harm of his son, Tristan. Adam was just not the type of individual that would come to your mind as far as being charged with quadruple homicide. So he had to take the stand to let people see that there was another side to him. Let's cut right to the chase, shall we? Adam Matos, on August 28, 2014, did Nicholas Leonard threaten your life with a gun? Yes, he did. Did you defend yourself? Yes, I did. Did you kill him? Yes. Why? He tried to kill me. On August 28, 2014, did you and Megan get into an argument um, when she got home at 5.30 in the morning? Yes, we did. What was the argument about? It was about the phone conversation that I had with Nicholas Leonard. He let me know that he was having an affair with Megan. She told me that she wasn't. Did you believe her 100%? I didn't know what to believe. I got upset, so I left the house. Adam was getting mixed signals from Megan. That was difficult for him to kind of process. Now, as you walked up those stairs, did you have a gun in your hand? No. A knife? No. A bat? No. A hammer? No. What, if anything, did you have in your hands? Nothing at all. Did Nicholas Leonard come up to you? Yes. He came from the closet area. He grabbed me by the throat, pulled out a gun, and he pointed it at my chest. Did you grab his gun? I grabbed his hand, and I pointed it towards the ground, away from me, so he wouldn't shoot me. Megan and Greg stepped into the room. She screamed out, Dad, shoot him. Shoot him, Dad. Did he have anything in his hand talking about Greg? A rifle in his hand. Did Greg pull the trigger? Yes, he did. What happened? It misfired. Tell us what happens between you and Nick Leonard. As Greg was continuing to try to shoot the gun again, I grabbed the hammer that was on the floor, and I just kept hitting him. Nicholas loosened his grip on his gun, and I was able to get it out of his hands. Adam is not a gun guy. There is no evidence he had any gun of his own, and the only guns used in this case belong to Nick Leonard and Mr. Brown. What happened with Greg and Megan? They ran back to the master bedroom. Did you chase after him? Yes. Why? I felt that he was going to get another weapon and try to kill me. When you got to the master bedroom closet, what was Greg doing? Attempting to load another weapon. What did you do? I shot him in his lower back as he was trying to turn around with his weapon. Did he go down then, or did he turn around? No, he had the weapon in his hand, and I shot him again. Tell us what happened next. As I was leaving the closet, I could see someone in my peripheral. It was Megan, and I thought she had something in her hand, and I just reacted, and I shot her. What did you do then? I lost it completely. I just realized that I killed a woman that I love, the mother of my child, Tristan, no longer had a mother, grandfather, and he no longer had me. You know, it's one thing for Nick Leonard to attack, but it's a whole other thing for somebody that he loved and they had this child together to be saying, Dad, you know, kill him, kill him. And then, 
you know, Greg Brown getting a gun and, and trying to kill him and shoot him as well. I heard the dogs barking. At that point, I was, I was still out of it. And I was scared that people might be coming to the house to kill me. So what did you do? I went down to the garage with the hammer that I used on Nicholas, and I killed Margaret in the west garage hallway. I hit her over the head to prevent more blood from getting everywhere. Like what happened to Nick, I put a bag over her head. I realize now that she probably wasn't trying to kill me. I was just so paranoid that I thought everyone was trying to kill me. Why didn't you just leave Tristan and drive off? I couldn't abandon my son. I couldn't just leave him like that. He's all I have. This is a loving dad. This is a guy with fears, emotions, just like you've got. If he would have been, you know, a cold-blooded killer, he would have hurt his son or not cared about his son. When Adam testified, it was no longer a circumstantial case because he had already agreed that he did it. So then the focus turned more towards showing why it wasn't self-defense and why it was murder in the first degree. In this case, the defense attorney tailored the questions in such a way that they just avoided large swaths of what happened. When he described the incident with Megan in the morning, he just took out any ill intent on his part. Megan gets home, morning of August 28th, right? Walks into Tristan's room. You were waiting for her there with the knife. No. You weren't? No. You just started yelling and arguing. We started arguing first, and that's when I pulled out a knife. I just wanted her to tell me the truth. I wasn't planning to use it on her. You never once held it up to her? No. You never once put it up to her throat? No. You never pointed it at her? No. You never told her you were going to use it to no. hurt her? No. You never threatened her in any way, according to you? No. Pasca County 911, what is your name? Megan Brown. Tell me exactly what happened, Megan. I just came home, and my son said I put a knife to my throat. And he put my hand, and I'm like bleeding everywhere, and my son's freaking out. I really don't want to do this in front of him. But he just Where? put a knife to okay. my throat, and he was going to kill me. <laughs> It's gonna be okay, ma'am. It's gonna be okay. I'm sorry, baby. Look at me. It's okay, baby. I'm sorry. Hey, so now someone come out here and say, "Oh, why you literally tried to get away?" What is his name? Adam Mito. Any time a jury hears a 911 call, they are in the room with the victim. Megan paints a very clear picture of how terrified she is, fearing for her life and the life of her son. If you want to say it was premeditated, this is the beginning of his premeditation. I was just holding it in my hand. I wasn't planning to use it on her. That's your testimony. OK. When you're brandishing a weapon and there's actual injuries involved, we've crossed over the line. He's made his intentions clear. The only reason he's there is because of this relationship with Megan, and now she's hooking up with somebody else. Adam's not digging it. He's a ticking time bomb. Margaret didn't get home until about 11.30 at night, right? Sometime around there. And you'd agree with me that Margaret coming in from work, she didn't have any weapons? No. She didn't say anything to you about, I'm going to kill you, did she? No. Killing Margaret was the key, because there's really no reason for him to kill her other than he's just planning to kill the whole family. That was a big problem with the self-defense claim. You just greeted her by beating her head in with a hammer. Yes. You agree with that? Yes. And you knew, based on what you already did to Nick Leonard, what effect that would have on Margaret Brown, right? Yes. Adam could have very cleanly, with some space and distance, shot her. But he wanted to feel this kill. That really is an important detail when you look at Adam Matos as the killer. This was not a, I need to get rid of the witness kill. He wanted to kill Margaret, and I think he liked it. I told you at the beginning of this case that we would present evidence that proved that this defendant was guilty of first-degree murder. 
Margaret Brown, Nicholas Leonard, Greg Brown, and Megan Brown. And I submit to you that at this point, that has been done. There's a lot of different facets of self-defense in Florida, but it does not equate to self-defense to just say, I was afraid for my life, so then I killed those four people. It still has to qualify within the statute. And he didn't even touch getting close to self-defense with, with Margaret. The irony of Adam Matos' testimony was, even with, if we just left it with what he said, he was still guilty of all four offenses. Mr. Matos, sentence is decided by the jury. Before we proceed with the sentence, I have a few things to say. This was the most selfish, self-centered, evil thing that I've ever heard. You took the stand and you said that you did all this for your son. It's ridiculous. Your son will grow up without a mother and without grandparents and without a father. So to say that Tristan is your whole world, I don't believe that. You did this because you were selfish. Obviously, we'd all rather be in the situation where Adam Matos had been caught by law enforcement before any of these horrible things had happened. Megan Brown, Greg Brown, Margaret Brown, and, and Nicholas Hunter were still walking around today. But I think that the way Judge Hansel conducted herself, I remember thinking, like, I am glad that the family is getting to see this in this way because I think it will help their healing. Based on the decision of the jury, I sent it to you in count one and count four to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In counts two and three, I sent it to you to life without the possibility of parole. As it turns out, on the count of murder in the first degree for Margaret Brown, the jury voted 11 to 1 for death which means Adam Matos' life was spared by the vote of one juror, and maybe his ability to stay calm under pressure on the witness stand. 